Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us today as we continue our study of Joshua. Man, this is an awesome series. I really enjoyed it. And it looks like it's going to be in it a while because it's so much material. But I'm glad that you're joining us. And before we get into the scripture, let's have a word of prayer and ask God's blessings upon us today and pray for one another. Let's do that. Father God, we are so thankful for who you are in Christ. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your uh, ministry to us. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word that we can uh, delve into. But God, I know that many that are watching today, they have needs, they have burdens, they have uh, standing in the need of miracles, some of them. And so we pray for those miraculous things that you're going to do. And Father, we pray that you'll help each one of us to step out into the faith that we need to step out into. And God, we give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to start today by just reading uh, one verse in Joshua chapter 3. And we'll be coming back to this passage. But it says in John chapter 3, verse Uh, not John, Joshua chapter three, verse seven. The Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Joshua had recently taken over for the prophet Moses. Moses had done so very, very much and God was making a promise. He had already made it earlier over the book of uh, when he was assigned. But he said, I'm going to promote you. I'm going to exalt you in the eyes of the people as I did Moses. So let's go back to Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, and read just a few verses. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, why do you, why do you tell Excuse me. Why do you cry to me? In other words, why do you keep praying? Tell the people of Israel, go forward. Tell them to go forward. They were at the bank of the uh, river, the the Red Sea, and they they were faced with an enemy behind them and the water ahead of them, and they didn't know what to do. And God was saying, listen, I've already told you what to do. Go and take a step. Now, let's drop down to verse 21, where it says this. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, and in the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels, clogging with what? With mud, so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights them against the Egyptians. Think about it. He said, the, all in response to what God said. And we read again in verse 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on the right hand and on the left. Now, that was an awesome miracle, and we could share so many thoughts about that miracle. But I want to center it around two thoughts where it just first told Moses, he said, why are you still crying out to me? You've got to step out. You've got to take that uh, step of faith. And then we also, 
I want to remind you that this purpose was to elevate Joshua in the eyes of the people. What better way to elevate Joshua than to see Joshua do something very, very, very similar to uh, what Moses did 40 plus years earlier. And so uh, that's what happened. They went across on dry land. Now let's go back to our study in Joshua and Joshua and uh, read verse eight, Joshua three. And as for you, command the priest who bear the ark of the covenant. When you come to the brink of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. In other words, when you get to the edge, step out, step out, stand still and do that. And he told him, grab the uh, one from each tribe to honor them. So uh, that's what they did. And then if we drop down to verse 12, it says this. Now, therefore, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe, a man. And when the soles of the feet of the priest bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in a heap. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with a priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan and the feet of the priest bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, now the, now the Jordan overflows all of its banks throughout the time of harvest. This was harvest time. The waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is by Zarethan, and those flowing down toward the Sea of the Erebertha or the Salt Sea were completely shut off, and the people passed over the opposite Jericho. Now the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel were passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over into Jericho. Don't you see a great similarity of those two great miraculous events? One was basically validating, again, uh, Moses. Moses had already been there. He had uh, gotten them out away from Pharaoh. But now they were surrounded by the enemy, and the Red Sea was in front of them, and everybody was still praying. They were still saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? The enemy's behind us. And God said, this wasn't Moses. God said to Moses, why are you still crying out? Nothing is going to happen until you take the step of faith. Now we come over to the Jordan River. Now, I've been privileged to go to Israel one time. Would love to go back again. But the Jordan River is not much. You say, what do you mean? It's talked a lot. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. Is it an important river? Yes. It flows down and it flows into the Dead Sea. But during the drier times of the year, the, or the normal depth of the Jordan is from three to 10 feet, from three to 10 feet deep. So it is not impossible to go across normally the Jordan. And there's probably even places that uh, there are fords that it's even sh uh, sh more shallow. And the average width is only 90 to 100 feet. So we're talking about a big creek. But this is a river. But remember what time of year it was. It was time of the spring harvest. There's two harvests, spring and fall. And it was a time when all the water and even over the Nile, that when you study the, the Nile, it overflowed every uh, flood season. Well, so does the Jordan. And so it gets much, much, much bigger. So when they got to that river, it was not three to 10 foot deep. It was much uh, uh, deeper and it was much, much wider. So I think we could say this was a miracle equal to what Moses did. But in both cases, in both cases, Nothing happened until a step of faith. Nothing happened until Moses got down to the Red Sea and held his staff up. Nothing happened. God asked him, why are you standing here? 
It's time for you to take that first step. Same thing. They got to the Jordan River, getting ready to cross in, knowing that Jericho was over there. But both times, God parted the waters. But this second time, it did not part until the priest stepped into the waters. Now, I don't know. I, I would have loved to have seen that on video, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to have seen when the waters, uh, when they said he parted, what he actually did is stop the flow of the river. So the water kept flowing and part of it stopped up. And then the, the uh, and and you had the the, the walls and the and the, and the river uh, Red Sea was there, but so the water stood up on each side. It parted them, and the amazing thing, it was dry ground. Now, we just recently had some storms, and you know that it was a few days for even us here in Sandy, Florida, for the water to be absorbed into the ground. And that was just a few inches. We're talking about this ground that talking about being saturated. The bottom of the river had been saturated, but almost instantly, or maybe instantly, it became dry ground. What an awesome, awesome miracle. Let's put this into today's language or today's narrative. We probably are never going to have to ask for a Red Sea to part. We're probably not going to have to go down to the Jordan River and say, God, we've got to, you've got to do us a miracle. But many of us, many of us have something blocking our forward progress. It could be a sickness, could be finances, or it could be circumstances, but it stands before us. And we know that God says he's going to supply our needs. We know that God's a healer. But sometimes, sometimes, let me rephrase that. If you can show me any time in the Bible that God did a great miracle. Now, he supplied their needs regularly. But when he did something that we said, oh, that was a miracle, that was supernatural, I can tell you, there's two things that were involved in that. One of them is faith. Faith is the key that unlocks the door. Prayer is the key to the kingdom, but faith unlocks the door. We pray in faith. We pray believing. And in both instances, I can tell you, Moses had spent time in prayer whenever, and, and Aaron leading the children out of uh out of uh, Egypt, then I know that this was Joshua had just been called and over and over again, he had been already told, be brave, be courageous. And I know that uh, he knew he couldn't do it on his own. He had to replace a man of 40 years. And God says, I'm going to have the same grace, same mercy upon this man as I had you. So that when they got there, they stepped in the water. See, sometimes God allows big problems to prove he's a big God. Do you think that we may sometimes limit God with our prayers? Because we say, God is not interested in that. God can't do that. I'm sure that I have. I'm sure that I have limited God. Because sometimes I didn't believe big enough. Do you think God ever wanted to say to you, as he said to Moses, why are you standing here? Why are you still praying? Start moving. And we could say, well, the water's too deep. The problem's too big. But you know what you're saying when you say that? You're saying God's not big enough. God's not big enough. We're taught to pray the scriptures. We're taught to claim the promises of God. Why do we need to pray the scriptures? Why do we need to claim the promises of God? They're there because God doesn't need to be reminded we do. 
we need to be reminded. And I'm sure it was going through Joshua's mind when he said, I'm going to validate you, validate you. Let me read that that verse again in verse 3, verse 7, where it says this. For the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. But first, you got to step out. And I'm sure that the thought was running to Joshua's head. Yeah, I remember when Moses crossed the Red Sea, I was there. I remember then he, when he sent me and Caleb and 10 others to spout the land. I believe God then, and I believe God now. But it's requiring a step of faith. When Bill Bright and James Davis launched the Global Pastors Network, the Synergize Conferences, a lot of people told them that their vision was too big. A lot of them told them that their timing was not yet. And we realize God's timing is very important. But Bill Bright responded to that question about canceling the meeting that had already been scheduled. And Bill Bright made a statement that I've quoted a number of times. You may have heard me. If we don't try, how will we know what God wanted to do? How many miracles have we missed because we thought the problem was too big? Or maybe more importantly, we thought God wants to use somebody else. But if God has called you, if his God has called me and given me a burden and a passion, he's promised me, I'll be with you. I will not leave you and forsake you. And just like he told Joshua, he said, I want you to stand. I want you to be strong. I want you to be courageous. I want you to go forth. Now, the amazing thing that standing on the other side of the river was the city of Jericho. Just across, the first battle they was going to fight was against a walled city. But guess what? God was preparing them for the next miracle. But they would have never got to Jericho. They would have never got to Jericho if they have to, hadn't stepped out into the river. Stepped out in faith. You may have some long-range dreams that God has given you. And you know that they're God-given, but you can't get to those dreams. You say, well, they're way down the road. Your dreams cannot be started being fulfilled until the first step. And sometimes we have to step out in faith to get to a place of our next big challenge. Now, when you cross the river, there's going to be other problems. But that, that problem, that river is stopping you. And so I think God is telling some of us, go ahead and step out in faith. Make that choice. If God has told you, now I'm not talking about doing stupid stuff just because we want to do something. But when we know that God has called us, Joshua knew that he called him and he promised him, I'm getting ready to validate you. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same thing for you that I did for Moses. Let's step out in faith. Let's step out in faith and believe that God is going to do the miraculous, that he's going to supply our needs, that he will protect us, that he will minister not only in us, not only to us, but he'll minister through us. Think about it. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to invest in these lives, to invest in these lives, to encourage them. Because Father, there's some that are fearful. They've got something ahead of them that is scaring them, scaring them to death because it's a raging river. It's at flood stage. But God, we know that you're bigger than any flood. You're bigger than any storm. You're bigger than any circumstance or situation. And we ask you, Lord, to show yourself mighty, that we can give you the glory, 
give you the honor that we can overcome and walk across on dry land, not because of our greatness, but because of your power and your ability. And we claim it and receive it in Jesus' name. Let us see that river and let us step out. Let us take that first step in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Lord bless you. Thank you for watching tonight. Thank you for joining in. And I want you to continue to believe God and be willing to take that first step when God reveals it to you. Lord bless you. You have a tremendous day and a tremendous week, and I'll talk to you next week.